Today is a wonderful day, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, it's a wonderful day. If, if you've not been blessed, make sure you get yours before you leave. Amen. Yeah, I got some already. You know, what we're about to share, actually, originally, I was asked to speak in another church. But for the first time in my life, the moment I finished on that Sunday morning, I turned to my wife and said, this is for North Carolina. I don't know. I, it's never happened to me before. I just turned to her and said, this is for North Carolina. And I was wondering, what did I just say? Because I was going to go to another church that very morning, and they were the ones this was prepared for, you know. And we saw what happened there. So if what's happened, those for whom it was not intended <laughs> for, then <laughs> fasten your seatbelts. The pastor said he felt like flying, so, you know, we're already on the runway. <laughs> so if you haven't buckled up, buckle up before we take off. It's going to be a fantastic ride this morning. Amen. We're going to talk about the subject of forgiveness. Amen. And in fact, it was after we went to the service, we came back and I was asking, no, when I told um, Vivian, my wife, my bride of 31 years, yeah. you know, <laughs> when I told her, this is for North Carolina, a few minutes later I said, what are we doing next, I mean, um, when we come here? Then we looked at the three topics. And so the last topic is resolving conflicts. I so, saw, you know, the very last, well, it was the last but one point yesterday, right? Yes, yes. Wasn't it on forgiveness? Yes. Ephesians 4.32. If you look at my notes here, it's in, it's in my notes from that time, <laughs> you know. But then it's much more than that. So today we're going to look at one of the parables of Jesus. We talk to us about forgiveness. Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 to 35. Matthew 18, 21 to 35. And a parable is a brief story using things about this world, you know, physical things, things we know, everyday things, to teach spiritual truth. So a parable is a brief story that uses earthly illustrations to teach spiritual truth. So as we go through this passage, we go through this parable, yes, think, all right, this is everyday life, but more importantly, think Jesus wants us to understand some spiritual truth, you know. Matthew 18, 21 to 35. So here comes our what, what was his temperament? A sanguine friend, Peter. Those of you who went here yesterday, you have to get the notes. You know, we are not going back over that. But Peter, we, were, we learned about temperaments yesterday. Peter was a sanguine. You see, all the disciples who came to Jesus. Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Seven times? No, he asked seven times. Now, what Peter said, you know, with those seven times, you know. But really, giving you background, at the time, at this particular time, the religious leaders had come up with their own rules. That if somebody did something against you, you could forgive them three times. After three times, well. <laughs> but that was the rule. That was what the religious leaders had established. You know, so Peter comes and he asks seven times. So he's done well, right? Being a sanguine, he doubled it and added one. <laughs> you know, so Lord, if I do it double plus one, oh, you know, I've done well, excellent, right? And what was Jesus' answer? Verse 22. He tells him, seven times seven, but until 70 times seven. Quick math, 490 times, right? Those who have studied this, they say, what Jesus was saying was not all the sins the person does, you add 490 times, you know, until it's 490. But that particular sin, because 
Peter was asking about a sin. One sin. So if I tell you, you know, go away you, for you is bad. So, okay. I say something nasty to you. Sin. Right? It means 490 go away yous. Oh man, that's, that's hard. So only that one. I'm allowed. <laughs> you know? And then if somebody says something else, somebody cuts you off on the highway, 489 more times left. Oh, that's tough. See, so Jesus takes what we think is high and he shows us there's an even higher standard. But there was more. You, you've seen that commercial, but wait, there's more. <laughs> Next verse. <laughs> So Jesus says to him, so, so then he tells them a story, okay? This can be likened to the kingdom of heaven, right? The kingdom of heaven can be likened to what happened between a king and his servants. A king and his servants. So stay with me. Now we are looking at a king and his servants. Okay, next verse, please. The king decides, I'm going to settle accounts with my servants. These people... They've been working for me. They haven't come to account. You got the next verse, 24? So he comes. He wants them to account. Reckon accounting. Old English, reckon accounting. So first verse of one. We don't know if he was the first, but one comes to him. And this man owes him how much? 10,000 talents. Now, 10,000 talents in today's language or basic, it was the equivalent of 20 years of a day laborer's wages. So it would amount to millions of dollars, 20 years. Now, laborers are not minimum wage. You know that. The laborers, the people who work on the highways, they, are, they don't get, they get even more, right? Uh-huh. So some of you were thinking, you know, McDonald's wage. No, there's a little more. <laughs> right? So who knows the... Wages of, you know, the guys, like a day, how many, $50 an hour? 15 Okay, so do the math. 15 an hour, 8 hours, 120 a day, times 365, times 20. Somebody compute that for us. Okay. 15 times 20, that's easy. You can do it. 300 times 365, you're getting the... And then we go on to, so he's talking millions of dollars, right? Now, he comes before the king. So you owe this money, right? Some of you are computing your mortgage. It may not reach to that point. Yeah. Plus your car notes, plus this, plus that, plus that. All of it doesn't even get there. This is just one guy. So he comes before the king. King does all that. And then what happens? Next verse, the king wanted him to pay. He couldn't do it. Now, Another spot about background. In those days, if you owed and you couldn't pay, you would be thrown into prison until your family came up with the money. Either your immediate family or your extended family. Depending on the amount of money you owed, sometimes the whole family would be thrown into jail. Can you imagine that? I hope you have all paid your taxes. <laughs> So Uncle Sam, the king, doesn't come after you. <laughs> Say, I'm going to hold your family. Some strange thing happened in Maryland. Um, was it last month? People, you know, somebody who was expecting a tax refund actually got a demand from the IRS. And it was not for her. It was for mother or somebody, very close relative, either the mother or father who had died and who owed the IRS. And she was stuck with the bill. And apparently, there is something on their books like that. Because it became a, this person didn't even know, now I'm being stuck with this, you know. So she was hit with, I don't know, 90-something thousand. Also, her own refund was withheld. <laughs> and just this past week, you know, the IRS sent her a check for her refund. So, okay, forget that one. <laughs> no. Which is what happened to this dude. So this dude, next, next one, please. Next verse. The servant did what? 
fell down on his knees. Oh, please, my king, forgive me. I can't pay. You know, my wife, you know, my wife, you know, my children, they, you know, one has qualified for NC State. We can't even pay the fees. We're trying to see if we can get financial aid. Please help me. The other one got Harvard, but we couldn't go. There was no scholarship, you know. So he's on his knees, right? And what does the king do? He says, no, first he tells the, the, the king, have what? Oh, have patience with me. And I'll do what? Okay. Is, is that reasonable? Yeah, you negotiate and space out your payments, right? Yeah, some of you, you go to hospital, you've gone to hospital, you know, they hit you with a bill. So I can't pay, so no problem, you know, we can space it out, right? Yo, they give you a payment plan. So he wanted a payment plan. <laughs> you think we started it here in America? <laughs> Okay, next verse. <laughs> so what happens? The guy asks for a payment plan, but the king does what? The king was moved with compassion, loosed him. Lose him means he set him free. He did what? One stroke. He said, Where, where's the bill? Let me see the invoice. He takes his pen. Wow. No more. He didn't owe millions anymore. As we say, with a stroke of the king's pen, it was done. That's it. It was done. Can you imagine that happening to you? How much you owe? Your car notes? Student loan? Yeah? When we read the Bible, don't read it and skip. He went to the Lord. Lord, give me more time. Many of us would have liked more time, right? Yes. We would like more time. But we can ask the king, and the king can do what? Some people have not caught it yet. This is for you. It wasn't for the people who heard it first. You want me to repeat what I said? I said, if you owe so much that you cannot pay. Where do you fall? You fall on your knees before the king. Ask him, Lord, I need more time. I can't pay in the time they are asking me. And the Lord will do what? Is somebody catching this for herself and for himself? Don't listen to the word of God and go away and be the same. This is a story illustrating spiritual truth. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. This is for North Carolina. It's for you. So take it. Take it. Take it. Verse 28. The same servant went out. From the presence of the king. And when he went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him how much? In today's terms, it's maximum $3,000. Three, like $3,200. Plus, which one? You got some big number there, right? Okay. So, 764000 At that time, in today's money, you know, we, when we had it, the place where we had it, somebody had it in the Bible, actually, it says like 3.84 million, something like that. You know, at that time, it would be that much. Today, 10,000 talents of silver would be worth 3.84 million dollars. And his 100 denarii would be equivalent of 3,200 U.S. dollars. So, you see, Jesus is using two extremes to illustrate the spiritual truth. So he goes out. The king has done what? 3.84 million. Wiped off. He goes out, sees Joe Blow, who owns him $3,200. Right? And what does he do? Laid hands on him, not in prayer like pastor does. And what else did he do? 
Are you? Did you read that thing? You say laid hands is like I meet Nana. It's oh Nana. It's saying you know. No, he did what? Held him by the throat. Right? When you are held by the throat, what happens? You choke. In the NIV, it says he began to choke him. When you are being choked, can you speak? So he was not even giving his fellow servant the opportunity even to beg. He who fell on his knees and pleaded to be given more time. He gets somebody who owns him less than 1% of what he owed. And he would not even give him the opportunity to speak, to beg him. Do you see the contrast? Don't miss it. Please go. And not only that, but <laughs> can you see the picture? He's choking him. And he's telling him, pay me what you owe. So how could a guy even talk? Next verse, please. 28, 29. The fellow servant did what? He also... Can you see him choking the guy and the guy goes to his feet? It isn't like he was free and he fell down. While being choked, he fell down. So he's fall, the guy is down... And he still got him by the throat. And the guy pleads with him saying, have patience with me and I'll do what? Do you see what the friend said? Let's just go back to verse 26. Look at what he said. Let's go back to 29. Same thing. Let's go to verse 30. But the friend would not agree. Dude said, would not agree. But he went and did what? He didn't even hand him over to some other people. He himself took him to the prison. I hope you are seeing this in the steps. He himself. Next verse. Who saw what had happened? So the king didn't even see it. He wasn't there, right? But it's the fellow servants. Can you see that in the king's palace, this guy who owed 3.84 million, after he was forgiven, they would have known what happened. But you, you realize that he never announced it to his friends. The Bible doesn't record that he went out rejoicing. Did you, see, did you see that he wasn't? He didn't even go out, oh, thank you, king, thank you, king, thank you for forgiving me. It's not even recorded. He just it says he went out, found, which means he went to look for the guy. <laughs> uh, these words are all important. So your student loans are wiped off. And then you remember that this guy owes me, yeah, he asked for this $50 the other day. He's not brought it. Yeah, that guy is like that. This one, I'm not leaving it for him. <laughs> yeah, that woman, she does this. Last time she went to Ajua, and she, and she came. I found out from Ajua that it's not even the first time. But the, after the, my $50, no way. Ah, I worked for it. Ah, when I was doing overtime, it was even winter during the snowstorm, yeah. and I drove through it. Do you, does, does, does she know what $50 is? Yeah. <laughs> but the fellow, fellow servants heard, right? They saw what had happened. Could it just be that the accountants or the assistants around the king were part of these fellow servants? So the news would have been spread, right? Yeah. Hey, Richard, he owed money. You know, that, you know this guy every time, you know. Just, I can't believe it. The king just, wow. As for mine, he gave me more time to pay. Why, as for, he owed even more. They canceled everything. 
But look, look how he's grabbed. Oh, look how he grabbed girls. He, he had him by the tree. He couldn't talk. He said, really? They felt sorry, very sorry, and came and did what? Told the king. Brothers and sisters, when we mistreat people, we need to be careful. Because we may be with them alone, but there are others who see and they tell the king. And maybe if you are like some people I know, they say, I'm going to Ajoa's place. Uh, I, need, I want you to go today. I want her to know that I'm a woman. Let's, can you go with me? And so, oh, she again, let's go. You are storming Ajoa's house. Actually, her apartment. Right? So, but are you sure she's there? Oh, I know. I've even checked her schedule. She's not working this weekend. So you go and storm. Beware of being made an accessory to this kind of behavior. Beware. So, what happens next? When they went, verse 32, sorry. Then his Lord, after he had called the man, said unto him, O oh, what? Thou wicked servant. I forgive you all your debts. Because you, oh, man. He was looking to the king, right? Yeah, we were singing earlier, God knows our heart's desire. This one is not that we even wanted, but he said, you desire, you, your whole mind was on me. You were pleading with me, asking me, oh, king, please, oh, help me, my children, NC State, all this, my car note, they are, they are, even the repo people are coming for my TV. All this, all that, gone. Okay? Next verse. So, should you also not have had compassion on your fellow servant, even as I had pity on you? Next verse. And he was wroth. He was angry. And delivered the man to who? You see that he didn't go to jail straight. If you read some of the newer versions, it says he delivered him to the torturers. Others say he delivered him to the jailers to torture him. This is not just, you know, go and they give you nice air conditioned jail. You know, usually the rich guys, Wall Street people, they get nice jail. <laughs> you know, nicer than the others, right? This was not that kind. But he said he delivered him to the tormentors till so he should pay all that was due. Now we're going to go into the highlights of the verse, verse 35. Let's, let's close with that. And then we come back to see what Jesus is trying to teach us. So likewise, my heavenly father will do too if you from your heart do not forgive your brother who trespasses you. Oh. So if I decide not to forgive Gaius, what am I doing to myself? I'm actually asking God to withhold forgiveness from me. Yeah. Ooh, did you ever think that? Some of us grew up learning the Lord's Prayer, right? Do you know there's a line in it that says, and forgive us our... And what's the next line? Have you ever stopped to think of that? God, forgive me as I forgive. So if I forgive halfway, this is our own prayers we used to pray. It's on us. And Jesus is saying, even if we don't pray it, the way we behave to other people, we invite God to behave the same way to us. Do you see how all this is tied? Not only with yesterday's, but with our study this morning. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall. Oh, he didn't show mercy. So he lost his mercy. And that's what we, don't, we even miss when we read this parable. Because he had been shown mercy. But he didn't show mercy. And he lost even the first one. Man, that's tough. 
to see that your record is wiped off, then they come back and they don't even tell you it was a mistake, but they say we have withdrawn it. Isn't that more painful? So you've won, you've won, you've won. One million dollar check you are delivering to your house. And then two days later they come and say, sorry, we are, we are, we are withdrawing the check. Why? We don't think you deserve it. But you said our decision is final. Isn't that more painful than if you hadn't even won it in the first place? You were tasting it. You were holding it. You were touching, feeling it, and it's gone. What is Jesus telling us here? First of all, all of us, we've just gone, th and then I also realized Easter was last week. When we were all reminded about what Jesus did for us. That's why this is for this place. Because when we did it, the people, Easter hadn't come, so forgiveness was far away. Now you and I know that when Jesus hung on the cross and stretched out his two hands, everything was forgiven. Do you realize that on the cross, Jesus' hands are not clenched? Everything. I'm not holding anything against anyone. Everybody can come to me. Everyone. Every, that's how he hung on the cross. Everything I've taken on myself already, it's finished. So why will you and I not declare it is finished unto somebody else? Fifty dollars, hundred dollars, a word, a phrase. Do you see that when we were even going around singing, we are together again, she didn't hug me. Next week, I won't hug her. Did you see that when he was coming to me, I stretched my hand and then he turned as if he didn't see me. He saw me and he turned as if he didn't see me. And then when we closed from church, he came, say, hey, what's up? What's up what? What's up is on the laptop. <laughs> <laughs> and he thought when he said, what's up, I'll respond. Shut me. So what did you do? Respond. Ah, somebody who won't shake my hands in the church, then outside you want to talk to me. Ah, where did the man meet his friend? away from the presence of the king. And many of us, that is where we meet the real test. The real test of true fellowship is not in the presence of the king. It is when we go away from the presence of the king. That's when we find our friend who owes us. And that's when we show that we know what has been forgiven us. Are you, are you following what I'm saying? So when the thing happens here, it is outside that you show that, yes, I know how to wipe your record clean too. But sometimes we fight here, and then we go out, and then we recruit more people to follow us. And you, don't, you want to see where it is in, in this one too. When he saw his friend, what did he begin to do to him? He began to choke him, right? What do we do when people wrong us? So I tell him, bro, what, what's, what's your first name again? Sorry. Jonah. Jonah, yeah, Jonah. So I tell Jonah, you know, Jonah, you have to beware of this, this Nana. Eh? He's been smiling. But watch him. <laughs> watch him. Then I see, Doc, you know, I know that you and Nana are close. It's not that I'm trying to say anything bad. But as for Nana, hmm, only God knows. But yeah. there are some things it's better if you don't say. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> then... I see my brother Jesse. Oh, I know that when we ask for the way you are cool, I know, you know, with your temperament too, you are very objective. But what I'm going to tell you, you know, if, it's just because I love you, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> but I just want to, you know, Nana is a good guy. Yeah. I know. He's, he's, a, he's faithful in the church and all. But, you know, some things, you know, we have to be wise as Christians. <laughs> you, you see? Oh, did I say anything wrong against Nana? Everything I said is, correct, is good, right? But what am I doing to Nana? I'm choking him. I'm choking him. The friends around him, I'm choking them away. I'm choking him by 
all these statements. And then you know the best one? We switch to Christian FM. You know Christian FM? When we say everything and we finish it. Anyway, let's pray for him. So everybody knows we, are, we have to pray for Nana, except Nana doesn't know that we are praying for him. For me, that's the Christian FM, not the one you listen to on the radio. You see, we have choked him. We have choked her by keeping everybody away from them. We don't see it that way, but that's exactly what we do. Soon, they come to church, he comes to church, and he means dog. So old dog gets saying, excuse I, I'm going to lead worship. Then <laughs> dog is gone. You know, he calls Jonah. Jonah says, oh, we have Reza. Wait. You, you want to say, okay, when we close, when we close. You know, goes to uh, Jesse. Jesse, what? Excuse. Uh, please. Uh, what? Are you, you said, okay, well, the service is starting. <laughs> Suddenly nobody is talking to Nana. And Nana has no idea. But it's because I have choked him. Are you with me? Yes. The parable uses earthly things to teach a spiritual truth. And we do that to our brothers and sisters so often thinking we are doing the Christian thing by warning people against them. Are you the Holy Spirit? No. Am I your Holy Spirit? Are you my Holy Spirit? That's why Paul would tell the people, I too have the Holy Spirit. You are all telling me this and that and that. I too, I have the Holy Spirit. So can I not think for myself? Can you not think for yourself? If I don't want to be friends with him, why do I want you also to cut him off? Has God made me a director over his friendships? So why do we do that to each other? And I'm even staying in the church. We haven't talked about the people who don't belong to us. Because the parable talked about his fellow servant. Not the ones who, this, not the guy who didn't work in the palace. We all belong to the palace, don't we? Some of you are not sure. <laughs> if you belong to Christ, right? Yes, you belong to the king of kings. The Lord Most High. So we are in the palace. And are we not his servants? Yes, we Hello? Yes. I hope you are being blessed. Yes. So if I leave the king's presence this morning and I go outside and I start choking my brother, guess what the king is going to do? So Richard, you just came when the prayer was going on. You know, the sister, sister kid led God, you know, thank you for forgiving us. And he said, amen, and all that. And as soon as you said amen, I took my pen and yes. But now, it has come to my notice that when you went out of my presence, you started choking your brother, your fellow servant, Nana. What I did for you earlier, I'm withdrawing. Which one? Hey. Which of us is going to stand? Which of us will survive till next Sunday? Are you with me? Why are you so quiet? That's what happened here. But how did Peter come? Seven times, double plus one. <laughs> See, you are talking seven times, double plus. I'm talking of those who choke others. They're the ones I'm talking about. And what did the man do? He delivered his fellow servant to prison. Do we not imprison our friends? After choking everybody around them, now we don't even call them. No phone call, no text. Suddenly, the text that we all get with the Bible verse, his name is removed. <laughs> you don't think it's happened before, eh? Yeah. I'm talking of people in the palace, not the people outside. 
Those who are not believers, we don't already don't we, we don't deal with them already. Uh, my ministry is to God's people. That's what he called me to. Because the Lord Jesus is purifying for himself a church, his bride that he will come for. He's not going to come for broken people. He's going to come for people alive and excited. How can I be happy and excited and sing, You are the Lord. Well, is that a song? Yes, you are the Lord. Mosai, yes, you are the Lord. In the king's palace. And then outside, I choke my brother. That's what happened to this dude. And you see, he delivered him to prison. Like we, after choking our brothers and sisters, we delivered them into the prison of isolation. Suddenly, no visits. Oh, he used to come here, but these days he doesn't come. I don't know, you know, America is something, you know. I mean, people, it's their, it's their job, you know. They, they want to get more money. Who told you that Nana is not coming because he's doing two jobs? But who is now continuing the FM story? Moi. Right? Yeah. So we don't see the brother anymore. After we have managed to choke him, right? And then he gets into the prison of isolation, and who locks the door? We do by continuing the isolation. Who goes to check whether he's even at home on a Sunday? Or who goes, who calls him after service to say, we missed you? Are you following me? Yes. Is there somebody who should be sitting next to you who is not here? Who you used to see three months ago, but you don't see now? Have you found out where he is? Have you found out where she is? Or you prefer for them to remain in the jail? Choked and tossed into the jail. Maybe you didn't put the person there. No, you didn't. But the person is in the jail of isolation. Have you gone to even visit them in jail? Didn't Jesus say we can even visit the people in jail? And God will bless us for it? Yes. Oh, yes. Somebody here has a ministry to go and seek those who should be sitting here and are not here. Could it be you? Could it be me? So that next Sunday, that person will be sitting next to you. And God will say, this is a son of encouragement. We are good to destroy, but slow to encourage. How many people have excelled by being destroyed? Are you following me? Yes. The Christian army in today's world is the only army I know that works to destroy its own who are strong and abandons its weak. Did you understand what I said? Yeah. A good army never attacks its strong. They strengthen the strong and they rescue the weak. Yeah. But we are often too quick to abandon the weak. You know, she was coming here, but... You know, she's some way. Her Christianity, I'm not even sure whether she's a true Christian. Now we have even given it grades. I thought Christian was one word. Now we have true Christian and some, I don't know, his Christianity, what? A Christian is one. Isn't an American, there's half American. An American is American. Of America, right? Yes, son or daughter of America. A Christian follower of Christ. Is there a false follower of Christ? How can you have a false follower? But we, we have differentiated. You know, he's a believer, but he's not very strong. He's a Christian, but he, I'm not sure whether he's a true Christian. And you want to marry him? But I know he's a Christian, Brother Richard, but, you know, but his Christianity is not like ours. So why are you going for it? And shouldn't we be strengthening the weak rather than? But that's the Christian army today. Did you hear that, Pastor? Did you hear that? Did you know that? Choking and then isolation, lock the jail. Keep them there. Why? 
because it makes us look good. Doesn't it? Me, I'm not, I'm, I'm a Christian, you know, I, I know that I'm trying. Did you see the word try to be a Christian in your Bible? Next week, this message is for this place. Next week, what will you be studying? Sunday school. Matthew, no, what? You didn't look, read the paper. Matthew 5.13. Jesus said what? A city set on a hill cannot be hid. You are the did he say we will be? You are there. You will be the salt. You are. You are. I am light. I am salt. Not I will be. We simply have to be what God has made us. But we are trying very hard to be something else. No, not even to be light. We are trying hard not to be light. By choking him. By isolating her. By keeping them in prison. That is God can't be light. We are working hard to be something else. To keep people in... How can light keep somebody in darkness? Are you with me now? Uh Uh-huh. How can salt make something untasty? Are you following me? You are to be salt. When I appear in a place, it should sweeten the place. When you appear in a place, it should brighten immediately. The entrance of your word gives what? And you have the word in you. So when you enter somewhere, there should be? And Jesus said we are? Okay, that's for next week, your study. So you're already up on it. (laughs) You see why the message is for here? But back to forgiveness. Is there somebody in your life you ought to forgive that you haven't forgiven? That you are still choking? Maybe the person is even dead. Your father. Your mother. Stepfather. Stepmother. Sibling. Husband. Wife. Co-worker. The person even left the company three years ago. You still, every morning you go to work, you pass his former office, and you are angry. (laughs) Who is suffering? So you see that the choking, eventually, who suffers? This message is deep. Is there somebody... I should be forgiven. Oh, but you know, that's how he is. So you already know that's how he is. So why are you taking offense? No, but it stops with me. He has, he has touched the wrong person. I'm going to show him where power lies. And power belongs to who? Oh, really? <laughs> Not to you. Oh, I see. I thought you had the power. But don't we say that? Oh, really? And when we say that, we are not turning the person over to God. But we take it on ourselves and begin to choke the person. He tried to show the guy that he had the power. And eventually the king said, let me show you who has the power. My mind was triggered to this passage because I got a phone call. Actually, it was an email. I was copied on an email. Somebody asking a mutual friend where I was, if he knew where I was. And I said, you know, and so I answered. You know, here I live in, you know. In fact, my friend answered, the mutual friend answered, copying us. And then, well, he wrote to my friend, so he copied me into the response. Said, oh, Richard works in New York, which is the case. You have to correct the facts. So, <laughs> so I replied saying, you know, I actually live in Washington, D.C. This is where I've been for the past 12 years, you know. Maybe a week later, I get a phone call. It's from the one who had inquired about me. It's a Christian brother. 
So we kind of chit chat. Oh, I didn't know you were in DC. Oh, so how are you? How's the family? He doesn't even know my family, but you know, we have to make small talk. This level what communication? Level one, cliche. So those of you who didn't come yesterday, <laughs> you see, so we did level one communication. Then he said, oh, actually, the reason why I called, now we are getting higher. <laughs> You know. Then he told me, he said, oh, you remember you know, when you were in Ghana, you used to run this publishing company? I said, of course, yeah, I do. And he said, yeah, you know, and I once brought a manuscript to be published to your people, which I didn't remember. You know. And he said, and I waited for about three months for a response, and I didn't get any. So I was very angry, and I came to your office. And when I came to your office, I was talking with one of your staff, a young woman, you know, when you came by and you asked, you know, what the issue was. And, you know, I was really angry and I told you a few, so I told you some nasty, I replied in a very rude manner and said some nasty things and I stopped and I said, I can't even remember. And you know his response, he said, but I do. And I said, really? He said, actually, I had also forgotten. But we were at a retreat the previous month, his church. And the person was speaking, and I, I think they, theirs was on reconciliation, you know. And he said, suddenly, the Holy Spirit opened my mind, and I, he said, I saw everything that happened in your office that day. And I said, I have to look for you and apologize to you for what happened. I said, there's not, I can't even remember. I said, but I, it's clear in my mind what had happened. And that's what God told me to do. I have to deal with it. That's why I tried to find out where you were. I actually thought you were still in Ghana. So I was wondering, how do I approach you? These are his words. He's telling, I'm narrating what he said. He said, I was wondering how to approach you. And I thought, next time I come to Ghana, you know, maybe I should buy you, know, you a suit or something to come and plead for your forgiveness. <laughs> I just laughed. You know. I said, don't worry about it. Well, first of all, he said, no, no, but I'm, I really, you know, it's so vivid in my mind. And God wanted me to deal with it. I said, well, first of all, there's nothing to forgive and all right. Just to fulfill all righteousness, you are forgiven. That's one. Second, I have never held anything against you, and I don't. So let that burden go away. And he said, thank you. Where are you? Oh, he's living in Canada now. His wife is a pastor. He's doing well. Okay, so we came back to level one after we went to level five. <laughs> Total communication. We spoke from our hearts, <laughs> and we finished it there, you know. What happened to the brother? What happened to the servant? The king set him free. That's what we need to do for each other, to set each other free. Isn't that what Jesus did on the cross? Free, nothing against you, nothing against me free. So instead of choking my friend Nana, when I see him outside, I say, Nana, you know, just one minute, one minute before you go. I know, I know sister is waiting for you, but just one minute. You know, um, when during the, you know, welcome song, you know, I was coming to shake hands with you and, you know, I felt like you turned your back on me. What do you think Nana might say? Really? I, I'm, I'm not sure. Oh, I did so. Then he will say, I'm sorry. What does that do to me? I'm set free. Because when I go and sit in my car, there's nothing against Nana. We have a doctor here. The nurses are here. 
You people know the psychosomatic diseases. In looking up, we're doing something on reconciliation. Somehow in my research, one of the articles I found out was from the website of Mayo Clinic, which specializes in the worst of diseases, right? They, that's their specialty. Okay. On the Mayo Clinic website now is an article on forgiveness and how it speeds up healing. Do they read the Bible over there? No. Didn't Jesus tell us? It's, you go there now. If you like, just put in you, your, those iPad, put Mayo Clinic slash forgiveness. It will pop up. It's right there. And they talk about the benefits of forgiveness. This is on their website. This, these are not Christians. They talk about how forgiveness brings healing. Forgiveness brings healing? Really? When you read Matthew 9, 1 to 8, somebody was brought to Jesus who was unwell, right? Paralytic. What does Jesus tell the person? Rise up and go. Stand up and go. Then people say, what authority has this guy from Nazareth to tell this man, rise up? Jesus, knowing what was in their minds, told the man, so that you people will know that the Son of Man has authority to forgive sins. Okay, son, your sins are forgiven. The guy got up at that point. You read Matthew 9, 1 to 8. That point he got up, rolled his mat, and went home. Forgiveness brings healing. It's in Matthew chapter 9. Mayo Clinic has found it. I, you know, when we used to say, I discovered that when I added the salt to the water, it dissolved. And the science teacher said, you didn't discover it. It has always been there. <laughs> so in your reports, don't use discover. Say, I found. <laughs> Those of you who studied science, you see that's what you write. Don't say, I discovered. It was always there. Listen to some of the benefits of forgiveness. It restores broken relationships. Matthew 18, 15. This is before Jesus even told this parable. Matthew 18, 15. Forgiveness restores broken relationships. But we've already seen it sets free, right? It liberates. So you can use Matthew 18, 27. It brings healing. Matthew 9, verses 1 to 8. Forgiveness also requires courage. It can actually give you courage. Because if I forgive him, right, next Sunday, what will Nana do? He will refuse to shake hands with me. Next week, I will be one of the first persons he will shake hands with. Because I've forgiven him. I have told him, oh, okay, you are forgiven. Next Sunday, he will actually look out for me. Has our relationship become weaker? Even though he may not have been a close friend, now he is going to come closer to me. I've had a friend for 47 years. We met the first day of secondary school, boarding school, <laughs> 13 September 67. We became friends on that day. And you know what really brought us close together? We fought. I mean, physical fight. Over an eraser. You know, the eraser, you know. But two things happened. First, I borrowed his ink pen, you know, what we call fountain pen. He had great handwriting and beautiful. Those of you who are much older, you will remember Parker pen. Woo, that was the pen. I borrowed it. It was on my desk. And just as young people, somebody bumps my desk or I pushed it, somehow, see now I can't even remember how the pen got on the floor, and the tip broke or chipped. So that's it, damaged, right? He forgave me, just like the king did, even though that was the only pen he had at the time, right? But a few days, maybe uh, weeks later, he borrowed my eraser, which my uncle had bought for me from abroad. 
So it was very special. And it is one of those who could erase pencil on one side and ink on the other side. So it was very special. He borrowed it and somebody nabbed it from his desk. Oh, how could he? How could he lose my beloved eraser? So as Americans say, we had an altercation. Nice word for fight. Nice word for quarrel. Altercation. Right? And it became physical. I.e., we fought. <laughs> Americans are good at all these nice words. And then we settled it. And we became very close friends. Today he is closer to me than a brother. We were roommates in college, university, and he was my best man. And his father calls me one of his sons. And his father has eight sons. So for him to call me one of his sons, it's not like he, ha he didn't have and he made me the one of the guys. But how did it start? We fought, made up, forgave each other. That's what it does. It strengthens relationships. Forgiveness also removes fear. When we are not afraid, we can come boldly into God's presence. Some people are scared of God because you've been told as a child, you do wrong, God will punish you. God will, so you are thinking of God sitting there with a cane. You do wrong, wham! You do wrong, wham! You do wrong, wham! That's not God. Right? He's got six billion people to take care of. Is it six or seven now? We are. Seven billion people. See, he's sitting, how many strokes of the cane is he going to hit everybody to keep in line? You know? He's got the whole universe, not just human beings, to take care of. So, you want the verses that deal with coming boldly to God's presence? Because of what Christ has done, Hebrews 4, verses 14 to 16. And then two more points. Forgiveness also deepens love. Forgiveness deepens love. Luke chapter 7, verse 47. Luke 7, verse 47. Forgiveness deepens love. And then... The last one, forgiveness leads to right living. Forgiveness leads to right living. And that's John 8, verse 11. Forgiveness leads to right living. Why is this important for us as we come to the close of this message? Why is this important? John 8, 11 Jesus has just confronted the people who were about to stone the woman caught in adultery to death. And after everybody leaves her, these were the people who were not only coming to choke her, but to kill her. Right? Jesus takes over. She's liberated. liberated, But Jesus leaves her with something. Verse 11. Over, let's look at verse 10. Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you. Go now and... Sometimes we get worried, if I forgive her, won't she do it again? If I forgive him, won't he do it again? Right? Does God forgive us? Or he says, I'm going to forgive you, but don't come back again. He forgives us how? Unconditionally. That's what Ephesians 4.32 tells us. Unconditionally. But we do not take advantage of that and live anyhow. She, he told the woman, go and sin no more. That is what forgiveness does. Forgiveness should lead us to right living. Isn't that what we read today? Was this message for this place? Yes. Sometimes you, you, you have to connect the dots. I'm sitting here listening to what is being said. I know what is in my notes. And I'm wondering, 
God is an artist. <laughs> you know? He's a great designer. I couldn't have put together like that. How does he do it for this to come after Easter? The very day we discuss living right, showing mercy, having compassion, making peace. And he wants us to know he's ready to strike off the record. But when we leave his presence, we have to carry the same to other people. And today, he wants to set you free from what you have carried for years. My friend, I mean, this guy who called me, I don't even remember the year it was. He said it was in the 90s. So it's at least 20 years old. But that's what has been he's carried for that time. That's been on his record books. But God struck it off Amen. the day we talked. Amen. I could have said, oh yeah, I remember. <laughs> you, so now you have, have you now realized? <laughs> have you talked like that before? I have. So, so you have now realized and you, you are coming to me. Okay, let me tell you what you did. <laughs> bam, 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 bam. The person comes and we drop them down again. Jesus straightened up and asked the woman. For the woman to answer, what did she have to do? She had to look up to Jesus. You and I, that's all we need to do. Whenever we look up, he wipes the record clean. And he says, go and sin no more. Amen. Let's be on our feet. We're going to just take a few moments to...